David Pogue this morning tells us all about the surprising resurrection of an infamous nuclear power plant and the tech giant funding its unlikely comeback. It might have seemed like one of the weirder headlines of 2024. Microsoft is paying $1.6 billion to restart Three Mile Island. Radioactive xenon gas is still being discharged. That's the nuclear power plant whose reactor number two had a partial meltdown in 1979. A government official said that a breakdown in an atomic power plant in Pennsylvania today is probably the worst nuclear reactor accident to date. There were no injuries and nobody died, but it set the nuclear industry back years. Only two new plants have been started since that accident. This is hollowed ground in the nuclear industry. This is a place where we learned and got better. So they did make change in protocols and procedures as a result of that accident? Thousands, oh my God, yes. The one behind it, that was the reactor where we had the problem. Oh, so three Joe Dominguez is the CEO of Constellation Energy, which owns about half of America's 54 nuclear plants, including Three Mile Island. But. The thing that people forget is that there was another reactor at the site, the one we're sitting in. That site, that reactor continued to operate until 2019 when it was closed for economic reasons. Meaning because natural gas got so cheap? Cheap natural gas, low demand, subsidization of different technologies in the business, no policy supporting nuclear, caused plants to start retiring. So what is Microsoft's interest? All the big tech companies have ambitious goals to fight the climate crisis. That includes Google. Today I'm proud to announce that we intend to become the first major company to operate carbon free. And Microsoft. By 2030, Microsoft will be carbon negative. They were making progress too. Each has invested billions in wind and solar energy. And then artificial intelligence came along. AI data centers require huge amounts of electricity. Big tech realized that they wouldn't make their goals without taking power into their own hands. Microsoft is gonna enjoy the benefit of the reliable clean energy for 20 years. Is restarting this facility quicker and less expensive than just building a brand new nuclear plant? Oh yeah, at least 10 times uh, cheaper uh, than building a new plant. And uh, we think we could get it going in about three years versus the last plant that was built took almost 10 years. But if you're a tech company, what do you do if you don't have a recently retired nuclear plant handy? You develop new ones. Only weeks after Microsoft's announcement, both Amazon and Google announced major investments in nuclear power. This is a deal to bring the first advanced nuclear reactor online by 2030. And we're not gonna do just one reactor, but we hope to buy from what will be a series of reactors that follow that. Michael Terrell heads Google's decarbonization efforts. Google is supplementing its already enormous green energy investments with a new kind of nuclear called small modular reactors. These are not the nuclear power plants of yesterday with the very large cooling towers. Uh, these are much smaller facilities, but because they're modular, you can stack them together to make bigger power plants. Nuclear power isn't perfect. It still produces waste that has to be safely stored. But unlike solar and wind, nuclear is always on, which is essential to those AI data centers. So Google is funding a company called Kairos Power to design and build this new generation of reactors. What we're building right now, and you can see the construction for, uh, will be the facility that holds our third engineering test units. Kairos is building three small demonstration plants in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, on the very spot where uranium was processed for the first atomic bomb. CEO Mike Laufer says that his reactors don't use fuel rods. They use fuel pebbles, like this mock-up. Uh, it's mostly graphite, and then these little particles right here, these are the basically the, the tiny kernels of uranium that have the coatings. And how much power capacity is there in one of these pebbles? This is about the same as four tons of coal. Four tons of coal? Four and, tons. and how much carbon dioxide emissions compared to the coal? Oh, uh, zero. <laughs>
The Kairos reactors also run at lower power and lower pressure than traditional reactors, which means lower risk. Well, this all sounds great. What's the catch? There's only one problem with small modular reactors. They don't really exist. George Washington University professor Sharon Squassoni spent 15 years researching nuclear safety for the government. She thinks the big tech companies might be in over their heads. I think they're going to find out pretty quickly that it takes way too long and it's way too expensive. I think we're going to see just how strong their commitments are to, you know, clean energy. So you're saying they, they may have to turn to burning stuff? I'm pretty sure they will. Do you think there's a little bit of uh, tech bro overconfidence there? And <laughs> oh, completely, completely. So yes, it's really hard. I will totally agree <laughs> um, with anyone. Um, Kairos' Mike Laufer. Um, but we're doing it at smaller scale to start and then building on that in the future. How much of what's here is still usable after all these years? Oh, it's all usable. Joe Dominguez's team is getting Three Mile Island ready for Microsoft. It's, it's this blend of old and new that's really good. Including renaming the plant, the Crane Clean Energy Center. And if AI is igniting a renaissance in American nuclear, he says full steam ahead. Why do all new plants take so much longer and cost so much more than projected? Honest answer, we don't build enough of them. You don't want to build a unique design. You want to do kind of a cookie cutter, uh, one after another design. Now, is it well understood in government and the industry that, dudes, if you start doing the same design over and over, we can get there faster and cheaper? It's probably the best understood idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's understood by both Republicans and Democrats, which is a hard thing to say uh, about <laughs> anything. But sure, everybody understands that if you build a common design, you build a bunch of them. So well. you think we'll get there? I do. Google's Michael Terrell agrees. As of 2030, does it look like you'll make the zero carbon goal? It is an incredibly ambitious goal, 24-7, carbon-free energy everywhere we operate, everywhere around the world. But it's something we're working very hard to achieve, and we hope to get there.